Priest Emeritus, for those who, of you who don't know, is going to do three imitations. Give him a warm welcome. Mary's a little bit difficult to guess, but I'm supposed to be Peter Pan. <laughs> and I'm going to take you not to a uh, far off country, but back into the 1940s, where if you will cast your mind back, you will find that there was a radio program. I need my glasses. <laughs> and a character called Pat O'Malley read stories about various people, and one of them was Herbert Penwinkle. And with the best of my remembrance, I'm going to tell you something of how it sounded. Herbert and the electricity. No doubt you recall the Pinwinkles and their little son, Herbert, the fiend, who had made their lives one long disaster from the moment that he had been weaned. For years he had puzzled and fretted and potted and cudgeled their brains for a way to get rid of their Herbert without getting home for their pains. One day father got an idea. This will do it, he said to his spouse. I've arrived at the answer to all of our problems, our prayers, how to get rid of Herbert, then, our son. Uh, they're building a dam down in the valley with high tension wires all about. And if Herbert should happen to grab one of them, it will jaws him to jelly, no doubt. So they packed up a neat picnic luncheon, and they sang when they thought of the fun. Then they took with them a second hand blanket to wrap over up in one gun. <laughs> then they made him drink plenty of water and filled up his pockets with steel. And to be totally sure, they got both his shoes and pried off the thick rubber eels. <laughs> Here's the place for a picnic, said father as he set the lunch down on the ground in the shade of a tall sort of skeleton tower with a high and a fence all around. With a wink, father whispered to mother, see the signboard? I hold it, keep out. Mother felt of the fence and she said with a sigh, it's a shame the wire is so stout. <laughs> father picked up an orange and tossed it. Here, catch that, young Herbert, he said. But instead of it landing on young Herbert's hands, it went over the fence and inside. Go on, catch it, said Father to Herbert. Oop, over you go now, that's fine. Mother reached for the teapot and said, Here you are. Pa said, Two lumps of sugar in mine. Now, Herbert's inside the enclosure found the orange without much ado. Then his eyes find a bright, shiny handle, and he thought, I'll take that along, too. So boy-like, he reached out and grabbed it. For a moment, excitement was tense. Father said, as he saw Herbert ushering about, I hope we don't throw in the fence. <laughs> there were flashes of lightning and thunder, and crackling noises were heard. Then something gave way. Herbert flew through the air and lit at their feet like a bird. See, his face is all purple, said mother. Said father, now Ma, no remarks. But Ma said, he looked odd with that eyebrows, and his nostrils has given off sparks. <laughs> they wrapped Herbert up in a blanket and hurried him home right away. Pa said, well, at least there's one, one comfort. We'll have no more insurance to pay. <laughs> but when they untangled the blanket and rolled Herbert out from beneath, he was happy and gay, and bright as a jay, and was lighting cigars on his teeth. <laughs> In despair, father said, look here, mother. I thought he was dead, but he's not. Mother reached out her hand, touched his head, and then shrieked, ye of say, he's terribly hot. Well, old Pinwinkle was disappointed, but he wasn't the one to be beat. He said, look, mother, I've got a great idea. We'll use it for power and eat. So they rented her about 
to the neighbors at one shilling for a kilowatt hour. Some use him for vacuum cleaning. Some use him for light, some for power. He had a gap in his teeth, or effort, and by showing a plug in between, you could make butter toast, or fry up an egg, or run a large washing machine. By sticking a plug in his nostril, you keep in a watch box as cold as a tomb. And by sticking a light bulb, most any old place, he'd light up a conference room. <laughs> well, the Penwinkles was both delighted. The money was coming in fast. Then one day, it appeared. It happened. Paul said with a sigh, I knew it was too good to last. A movie star came to the village to pose for the cinema news. They wanted her picture with Herbert. She kissed him and blew out his fuse. <laughs> But uh, I used to do an imitation of the real thing. And so here is a little farther back even, Clyde McCoy playing the trumpet. I've forgotten the name of the song. It's going to plumb out of my head, but I think I know it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 